how to find oxidation states as you are working with redox reactions. You've been given ion 3 sulfate. And you've been asked to find the oxidation state for for ion like that. So to be able to find the oxidation state for ion, in this one you are going to take the sulfate as one compound. And you know that as a sulfate has got a charge of negative 2. So you are going to take this oxidation state as a negative 2. So we are going to get this 2 multiplied by the oxidation state for ion and then plus this 3 which is down here multiplied by the oxidation state for a sulfate. This should give you a 0 because this compound you can see doesn't have any charge. And so 2 multiplied by the oxidation state for ion we don't know that's what we're trying to find plus 3 the oxidation state for a sulfate is negative 2 this should give you 0 so this is going to be 2 ion minus 6 is equal to 0 take the 6 the other side 2 ion is equal to positive 6 so that will give us the oxidation state for ion being equal to positive 3 again include the sign don't just write 3 it's positive 3 so that's the answer for that one okay so when you are talking about balancing redox reactions there's something that i need to mention even before we get to understand how to balance redox reactions you need to understand a reducing agent oxidizing agent and then the compound undergoing reject, uh, reduction and the one undergoing oxidation take for example you have got magnesium which is a solid let's say it's reacting with a uh, copper 2 plus which is in aquas and this reaction it produces magnesium 2 plus which is in aquas and then you have got now copper which is a solid you want to determine which one is undergoing reduction which one is undergoing oxidation in this reaction so the first thing that you should be able to do is determine the oxidation states or oxidation numbers of all the elements which are in this compound the oxidation number for this one is a zero because it's a pure element same with copper here it is a zero because it's a pure element so you can see that the magnesium has moved from having an oxidation state of four, zero to having an oxidation state of positive two whenever something becomes more positive you need to know oxidation is loss every time something becomes more positive it means it is undergoing oxidation more positive if it becomes less positive that is reduction for example from positive 5 to positive 3 that is reduction because it is less positive so in this question because we are moving from 0 to positive 2 there is oxidation happening and oxidation is the loss of electrons meaning that two electrons have been what have been lost and then you look at copper copper is moving from positive 2 to a 0 it is becoming less positive like two positive two is more positive than zero and becoming less positive is reduction reduction is gain meaning that two electrons here have been gained <coughs> so what does this mean the one which has gained electrons and the one which has lost electrons what does this mean oxidation is the loss so the one which has lost electrons has undergone oxidation so this is the oxidation reaction the one which has undergone reduction uh, gaining of electrons it has gotten reduced so that is the reduction another thing that you should be able to know is that when you are talking about the compound that undergoes oxidation is called the reducing agent the compound that undergoes reduction is called the oxidizing agent it's just more opposite like that now what is an oxidizing agent and what's a reducing agent a reducing agent is an agent that is going to reduce another substance or itself it gets oxidized it's just an agent an agent is not going to do something for for themselves they are going to do something for another we have got mobile money agents those are there to give you money they are not there to give themselves money so an oxidizing agent is an agent that oxidizes other substance while itself gets reduced in the process so this is what we need to get to know when you're talking about 
oxidation and reduction. It's very, very important for us to be able to understand. All right. Now, let's understand how do we get to balance redox reactions. We have got two methods of balancing redox reactions. And the first method is balancing redox reactions by oxidation number method. And how do you get to balance oxidation reactions by oxidation number method? Just like we showed on the previous one. I'm going to give some examples. So let's say we've been given. We have zinc. And this is reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce zinc 2 plus plus chlorine and then plus hydrogen they ask us to balance this reaction by oxidation number method what should we be able to do the first thing is determine the oxidation numbers of all the species in this compound zinc you can see is a pure element so the oxidation number is going to be zero in this compound, hydrochloric acid, hydrogen, you know that the oxidation number is positive 1. Chlorine is negative 1. And then when we go to zinc here, it already has a charge. So the oxidation number is that same charge, positive 2. Chlorine, it has a charge. The oxidation number is that same charge, negative 1. Hydrogen here is a molecule. The oxidation number is a 0. Now that we have determined all this, we need to look at which species have got the oxidation numbers change. We can see zinc has moved from being a 0 to being a positive 2. Okay. From being a 0 to being a positive 2 like that. So what has happened? It has become more positive. And whenever something becomes more positive, that is oxidation. And oxidation is a loss of electrons. So whenever something becomes more positive, just know that electrons have been lost. So in this one, Two electrons have been lost. And then you look at the other one. Which other species has changed? So if you look at high, uh, chlorine, it is negative 1 on the reactants. Also on the products, it's negative 1. So don't worry about it. Hydrogen, it is for positive 1 on the reactants, but it's 0 on the products. So I'm also going to put a line like that. So it has moved from positive 1 to 0. So you need to find the difference between 0 and positive 1. So that is a 1, right? So that means that one electron has been what? Has been gained. Why are we saying gained? Because it has been moved from being more positive to being less positive. And whenever oxidation number reduces, that means electrons have been gained. Now, when you reach at this point, what we are going to do is we are going to look at both reactions. Yes, Joyce. Sam, yes. why is um, hydrogen on the product side having um, the oxygen number zero? All right, so every time you see an, uh, a pure element, every time you see a molecule, the oxidation number is always zero, if it doesn't have any charge. But has, is it not one? Okay, it is a one when it is in a compound. For example, in hydrochloric acid, it has reacted. The oxidation number is going to be one. Just like oxygen, oxygen has got an oxidation number of negative two when it is in a compound. But when it is alone, it is zero. Okay, thank you. All right. So when you check on this reaction, the way it has been. So we are going to look at the electrons lost and the electrons gained. You are going to swap those numbers. So this one, we have got one electron, which is gained. So I'm going to multiply this portion by a 1. And then these two you are able to see here, I'm going to multiply this reaction by a 2. So I'm going to write this again. So we have zinc plus hydrochloric acid going to zinc 2 plus, and then plus chlorine minus, and then plus hydrogen like that. So what you are going to now see is this reaction, starting from where the arrow is beginning to where the arrow is ending, we are multiplying it by a 1. So if you multiply something by a 1, it doesn't change. And then this reaction, starting from where the arrow is to where the arrow ends, we are multiplying it by a 2. So I'm going to put a 2 in front here and then going to hydrogen. Now, for hydrogen, I'm not going to put a 2. You are going to ask me, what's the reason? Because there is already a 2 here. 
these two that we are multiplying is the number of atoms of what? Of hydrogen. Remember, we are trying to balance this molecule. So if we multiply by a 2 here, there is already a 2 on the molecule hydrogen. So you don't need to balance that side. So that's why you need to check, even as you are multiplying, you check if there is already a, uh, a subscript, a number below. So I'm not going to multiply. So when you are balancing by oxidation uh, number method, after doing that, I've already multiplied by this number and also by this number. The next thing you are going to do is now balance by inspection. Just look for those which are not balanced and then balance just by looking at them. You can see zinc. You only have one zinc here. You have one zinc. You have got two hydrogens. You've got two hydrogens, but you have got two chlorines. You only have one chlorine here. So balance by inspection, just put it to there. Then you have balanced by oxidation number method, as direct as that. And then if there is need at the end now, just put state symbols. Zinc is a solid, hydrochloric acid is in aqueous. Zinc here is going to be in aqueous because an ion chlorine, aqueous hydrogen here is a gas. Then you are balanced. The equation is balanced. Hope that is good. Let's look at another one. Okay, so let's say we've been given a reaction where you've got, let's say we've been given uh, copper, which is a solid reacting with silver, which is of course an ion, so it's in aquas, and this is going into silver, which is a solid and then copper 2 plus in aquas. Want to balance this reaction A using oxidation number method. The first thing to do always first, make sure that you do it. You write the oxidation numbers of all the elements in this compound. So copper here is a metal. It's just an element. Oxidation number is zero. Silver here, you can see it has got a positive one charge, so that's the oxidation number. Here it is going to be zero because the pure is in its pure form, and then this one is going to be positive two. And then look at which one is losing electrons, which one is gaining electrons. So you can see copper is moving from zero up to positive two. It is becoming more positive, and whenever something becomes positive, that's oxidation because it is losing electrons. So two electrons have been lost. And then look at for this uh, silver from positive one to zero, only one electron is involved. So one electron has been what? Gained. So as we did on the previous one, swap these numbers, we're going to multiply this one by a two and then multiply this one by a one. Meaning the reaction that contains copper will just be copper, which is a solid. And then the one which contains silver, you see we're multiplying by a two, so that will be two. Ag plus, which is in aquas, and this is going to be going to 2 Ag, which is silver or solid, and then plus copper for the copper. We'll just write it like that because I'm multiplying by 1 in aquas. So if you inspect, you have got one copper here, you have got one copper, you've got two silver, two silver. So the reaction is balanced just like that. Do you have got questions? All right, let me give you a last example using the oxidation number method. So let's have been given a reaction, hydrogen ion reacting with Chlorine ion, also reacting with tin, and also with a nitrate. 
and this is producing tin chloride and nitrogen dioxide and also water. This is the reaction and then we've been asked to balance this reaction using the oxidation number method. Question is how are we going to work it out? So determine the oxidation number of all the elements in this compound. First, starting with the hydrogen, you can see it has got a positive one charge, so its oxidation number is positive one. Chlorine is negative one. Uh, tin here is zero because it's in its pure form. Oxygen is always negative two. What of nitrogen? What will be its oxidation number? So say so the oxidation number for nitrogen plus we've got three oxygens and this oxygen the oxidation state is negative two should give us the charge. The charge of the compound is negative one. So this will be negative six. We take it the other side becomes positive six. Positive six minus one that will give us positive five. So that will be the oxidation number for nitrogen. And then we come here. We know the oxidation number for chlorine is a negative one. So we we'll say the oxidation number for tin plus we've got six chlorines each with the oxidation state for negative one this should give us the total charge as a negative two so this will give us oxidation number for tin being equal to take six the other side positive minus two that will give us a positive four and then also in nitrogen monoxide the oxidation state for oxygen is negative two so if we add the oxidation state for nitrogen plus we've got two oxygen and each has got a charge of negative two this should give us this is not a charged molecule so it should give us zero so take the negative for the other side that will give us a positive four and then in water oxygen has got a charge of negative two and then we have got two hydrogen plus we only have one oxygen and it has got a charge of negative two should give us zero because water is not charged. Take the negative to the other side and then divide by this two. You are able to see so hydrogen is going to be positive one. Actually, hydrogen, we know that the charge is always a positive one. So I've determined the charge of all these species. And then we need to look at which one has got charges which are changing. Because some, if you look at the reactant and on the product, the charge is still the same. So let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen, this side we can see is a positive one. Also, this side is a positive one, so it's not changing. Chlorine here is a negative one, even this side is a negative one. If you look at tin, here it is a zero, but here it is a negative one. So we have got this. It's moving from zero to negative one. It is becoming less positive or more negative. Whenever something becomes more negative, it is gaining electrons and gaining electrons, we know that is reduction. So this is a reduction and one electron has been gained. So now we need to look at also which one is losing electrons. So if we look at the nitrogen, it's from positive 5 to positive 4. Like oxygen is the same here, also on the product is the same. So nitrogen has moved from positive 5 to positive 4. So what is happening is that it is becoming less positive from what we are able to see here. So what does that mean when something is becoming less positive? Well, again, something here I think I've taken to... A wrong side you people are not watching I was talking about tin this side I took it to chlorine that's not correct so we're moving from tin to tin you can't move to from tin to chlorine so it is moving from zero to positive four it is becoming more positive and becoming more positive is oxidation and oxidation is it loss of electrons so four electrons have been lost and then on top from positive five to positive four it is becoming less positive and when something becomes less positive that is reduction reduction is gained so one electron has been gained so we're going to multiply this reaction by a four we're going to multiply this reaction by one so we just swap these numbers we are able to see and then I'm going to now write this reaction again. So I've got hydrogen 
plus we have got chlorine minus we have got this reaction remember starting from tin up to this point is supposed to multiply by one but a one will not change anything and then this one from here up to we are supposed to multiply by a four so that will be four no3 minus and that is going to go to sn cl6 two minus and then plus also this one will multiply by a four so that will be four no2 and then plus a water after you multiplied with the coefficients that we are given, now look at balancing this the whole reaction using uh, just monitoring what is happening. Or you just get to look at it. So just by looking at it, you balance what has remained. So if you check, first let's balance any other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Please, you need to follow this. It will be important. Balance any other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So look at chlorine. Chlorine here is a 1. This side, we can see there is a 6 down here. So we're going to put a 6 here. Look at tin. Tin is a 1. Even here is a 1. So it is fine. Look at nitrogen. Here is a 4. Even here is a 4. So that's fine. After balancing that, the next thing that you balance is oxygen. Always balance oxygen before hydrogen. It will be important. If you look at oxygen, here 4 times 3, that is going to give you a 12. So here we've got 12 oxygens. And then this side we've got 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay, 8. But remember this side is 12. How many are remaining for us to have 12? Remaining is 4. So that 4, we need to balance this one. So we're going to put it here. So we balance the oxygens. When we put a 4 here, we've made the hydrogens, 8 of them. And here we only have 1 hydrogen, so we're going to put 8 here. And then after doing that, you've balanced the reaction. The next thing that remains is just put the state symbols. Are we good with that? Is there a question? All right. So that is balancing using oxidation number method. Now let's uh, look at another method, balancing using half reaction method, which is also called ion electron method. And this one is the most interesting part. Now when you are balancing, it depends with what you are talking about. If you are talking about balancing in acidic condition, the, what determines whether a compound is an acid is the presence of an hydrogen ion. So at the end of it, we need to have an hydrogen ion when you're balancing in acidic condition. And what determines when that something is a base or not is the presence of hydroxide. So if you see hydroxide, this would be basic. So at the end of balancing in basic condition, you need to have an hydroxide. In acidic condition, you need to have an hydrogen ion. Okay. So there are steps that you are going to be following to be able to balance. Let's have been given the question, want to balance this comp uh, the reaction. And they've asked us to balance this reaction in acidic condition. How do we get to balance it? So we're going to be following steps. Step one. You need to break this reaction into half reactions. So what you are going to do is you look on the reactants, what has same elements as on the products, those should be together. So on the reactants, we've got this compound, which contains the chlorine. Then on the product, it needs to point to the chlorine ion. And then on the reactant, you've got the iodine ion. They should point to the iodine. After doing this, the next step, step two, is balance any other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So you look at these two reactions, you balance any other atoms. So for the first one, we've got a chlorine in there. Second one, we also have the, I mean, on the reactant, on the product. And so for this one, 
what we are going to be able to do is we'll not add anything. Why? Because it's already balanced. The chlorine on both sides is already balanced. So we'll just write it the same way it is. Okay. And then the second one, you can see we only have one iodine, but we've got two this side. So we're going to add the two in front. And then it goes to iodine like that. And then step three, you need to balance oxygen. And that would be balance oxygen by adding water. Balance oxygen by adding water. And you are going to look at the side that has got less oxygen atoms. You can see this side you have got three oxygens. So depending on the number of oxygens, that will determine how many water molecules you are going to add to the other side. So this will be ClO minus goes to iodine. So you are going to add three water molecules because you have got three hydrogens. Yes, Musonda. <laughs> On the step two, where there is chlorine, on the other side, retain oh. or either. Yeah, thank you so much. This is a Cl. Okay, thank you. That was a chlorine ion, not what I've written. Okay, like that. So because we have got three oxygen this side, we're also going to add three water molecules the other side. The second equation doesn't have any oxygen, so we'll just copy it the same way it is. After doing that, step four. Okay, you can switch off the mic, or you have something to say. All right. Step four now, balance hydrogens. And how do you balance hydrogens? By adding hydrogen ions. So I'm now going to look at the reaction that has, has got hydrogens. You can see this first one has got, because we introduced water, the introduction of water brought in six hydrogens. So I'm going to add six hydrogen ions to this side. Please don't add hydrogen, add hydrogen ion. And then write it the same way it is. The second one doesn't have any hydrogen, so just copy the same way it is. After doing that, after now at this point you have balanced all atoms. After you've balanced all atoms, then step five. You are going to balance charges. And how do you balance charges? By adding electrons. Okay, balance charges by adding electrons. And how do you do that? You are going to look at both reactions on the product side and on the reactant side. Look at the net charge on the product side and on the reactant side. So if you look at the first reaction, just the first reaction on the reactant side, you have got six positive charges, that is six hydrogen ions. And then you have got a chlor this compound here. Please get the charge you are able to see. Don't get the charge of individual atoms. So get the charge that you are able to see on top. The other is a negative one. And then the reaction goes like that. On the product, we have got only one negative charge. Why? Because we only have one chlorine. And then plus, do we have any other charge? Water is not a charged molecule, so plus zero. Meaning that six plus minus one, that is a positive five to negative one. So this is how charges are moving on the first reaction. And then look at the second reaction. We have got two multiplied by a negative. So I've got negative two charges on the reactant side. And then on the product side, this compound doesn't have any charge. So that's a zero. So that is what is going to determine how you are going to balance the charges. So this means that if you look at this reaction, you are saying, what number can I add on any side? Remember you are adding, balancing uh, electron charges by adding electrons. And take it like this, electrons are negatively charged. So on the side that you add electrons, it's more like you are subtracting a number. Remember if you have got four and then you add a negative number, 
what are you doing? You are more like just subtracting. So you are subtracting. On the side, you are going to be adding electrons. You are going to be subtracting. And make sure that you go to the side that is much bigger. When you add electrons, make sure that when you add those electrons, it should give you the same number as the one which appears on the other side. So in the case of the first reaction, you have got a positive 5 here. What number can I add to a 5 to get a negative 1? Or what number can I remove from a 5 for me to get a negative 1? What do you think? What number can you remove from 5 to get negative 1? We are quiet. <laughs> Sonda, can you say that again? You people, what number can you remove from five to get negative one? We don't know that. <laughs> Or oh, if it is difficult, all right. Negative six. Yes, it's a negative six. If you remove six from five, I'm going to get negative one. If it, that is difficult, look at what is on this side. Just a negative one minus, look at what is on the reactant side. That is going to give you negative six. Meaning that on this side, because you are removing from five, so on the five, on the reactant side, you're going to add six electrons. So that is going to be six electrons. And then write the same way the reaction is plus six hydrogen ions, and then plus ClO3 minus to produce Cl minus plus three water molecules. And then on the second one, you see we are moving from negative two to zero. So to find what number we are going to add to which side, just say the product you have got a zero minus the reactant you've got a negative two. What we are finding is a positive two. Always add on the side that is bigger. Why? Because when you add electrons, it's more like subtracting. So if you say zero minus two, it will give you negative two. So both sides will be negative two is equal to negative two. That means you balance the charges. So this will be two iodine minus producing iodine plus, I mean iodine two, and then add two electrons on the product side. So you can't have an instance where you're adding the electrons on the same side. If you add the electrons on, for the first reaction on the reactant, on the product, don't add on the re reactant, then it will be on the product. Hope you've gotten how we've gotten this. And then after you do this now, step six, it will be now balance charges by multiplying by coefficients. If you look at what we are calling charges or balance the electrons in both reactions, here you have got what? Six electrons. Actually, I should say balance electrons. We have got six electrons here. We've got two electrons here. So you look for a number that you should multiply with the first reaction and the number that you should multiply with the second reaction such that you get the same number of electrons. So if you look at this one, if you multiply a 3 by a 2, you are going to get 6. So just multiply the second reaction by a what? Just multiply by, by 3 the second reaction. And then you are going to balance the electrons. So the first reaction, just write it the same way it is. And then the second one, this two multiplied by three, that is going to give you a six iodine. And then on the product, we're going to have three iodine two, and then six electrons. After you do this, the next step, step seven, is now add the two of reactions. And anything that is going to appear on the reactants and on the product of both reactions, cancel it out. So even before I add, just do this. This is the arrow separating the reactants and the products. Also on this second one, that's the arrow separating the reaction and the product. So everything you're able to see this side are the reactants and everything you're able to see this side are the products. So look at what is appearing on the reactant and on the product. What is the same and cancel them out. So this 
six electrons is appearing six electrons is appearing here it will cancel out here you have got iodine here you have got iodine this is an ion this is a molecule so you can't cancel those so now you can add the reactions first start with the reactant side you have got six hydrogen ions and then plus you have got this one this is also on the reactants and then also this one is also on the reactants six iodine and then you go on the product you have got chlorine minus you have got a three water molecules you have got three iodine molecules so if you look at this reaction at the end we have got hydrogen ions this means it is in acidic condition if you check now you can just inspect if it is really balanced you've got six hydrogens here three times two that is six you've got one chlorine here you've got one chlorine you have got three oxygens here you've got three oxygens there you've got six iodines you've got six iodines that's balanced and these questions carry marks so make sure that you answer them all they carry like big marks you'll find that maybe it's 12 marks 10 marks 8 marks